I might turn around moving and going to their church and talk to the will of God. Will you open your Bibles, please, to the book of Hebrews? In Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. This morning, the Spirit of God came into a bathroom there at our 8 o'clock service. We almost ran right into the service. <laughs> I just was so glad for this morning. Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God. Come on, let's read verse 22 together. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from the guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess as he who promised his faith. Father, we thank you for your word. May you open our eyes that we may behold wondrous truths, revelation knowledge from your word. Open our ears, O God, to hear what your spirit has to say to us. We bind the distractor this morning in Jesus' name. I feel the blood of Jesus all throughout this atmosphere. And Father, we give you uh, the privilege, Lord, to speak to us as you see fit today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. May take your seats, please. Praise God. Listen to this one. What various hindrances we meet in coming to the mercy seat. Yet, who that knows the word of prayer, but wishes to be often there. Prayer makes the darkened clouds withdraw. Prayer climbs the ladder Jacob saw. It gives exercise to faith and love. It brings every blessing from above. Restraining prayer we cease to fight. Prayer makes the Christian armor bright. Mm. And Satan trembles when he sees the weaker saint upon his knees. Yes, yes, yes. While Moses stood with arms spread wide, success was found on Israel's side. Yes, yes, yes. But when through weariness they failed, that moment, Amalek prevailed. Have you no words? I think again. Words flow, words flow at base when you complain and fill your fellow creatures' air with the sad tale of all your care. Will half the breath thus vainly spent to heaven in suffocation set? Your cheerful son will often to me hear what the Lord has done for me. Written by the English poet William Cowper. Mm. Amen. I want to share with you today on this area of the elementary teachings about prayer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Amen. Some of you are our guests. I need to sort of bring you up to date for well, you. Maybe looking at me wearing this prayer shawl. Maybe asking, why does Cooper have this thing? You may not even know what it's called. Mm, why is it that Cooper wearing this prayer shawl today? Well, sometime last year, while we were praying, yes. the Lord spoke clearly to us and said that He's clothing destiny with yes. a different kind of garment. Yes. Come and say to me, Different kind of garment. The garment that he's clothing us with is called the Levitical priesthood. 
And the job of a priest is to stand before God on behalf of mankind. Yes, 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 yes. yes. The job of a priest is to stand before God on behalf of men. Yes. The job of the prophet is quite different. Mm -hmm. The job of the prophet is to speak to men as to what God has to say. It's quite different. The two offices are different. So we know exactly, since that God has called us to wear the Levitical priesthood, we decided to go out mm -hmm. and to purchase over yeah. a hundred of these. Yes, yes, yes. And we gave them out to all those who are workers in our church. Can I believe it? Amen. Amen. I just need to remind those of you who thought that we gave this to you so that you can put it on your shelf. Wow. And it says, look, the gift that destiny gave me. Come on now. May I remind you, please, <laughs> that when you get home today, take it off the shelf. Uh, open it, please. Come on. And put it on you. Yes, yes, yes. And I want you to talk to God yeah. on behalf of yourself and yes. on behalf of your family. Yeah, yes, yes. Same yeah. to you. Because many of you are looking at us, the pastors, and are saying, let the pastors pray for you. Mm. But may I remind you that although I'm a pastor, I am a husband. Yeah. Come on, I have now. a wife. One wife, please. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Down, down. Amen. And I have some children. Yes, yes, yes. And I have some grandchildren. Yes. And I have some siblings too. Yes. And if my assignment, according to Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, and then God says, I'm looking for someone to stand before me in the gap yes. on behalf of the land. Yes. And when I said, Here I am, Lord, send me, that means God called me yes. to stand in the gap on behalf of the Cooper's household. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you didn't hear me. You thought your name was Cooper. Uh -uh. <laughs> Watch out, man. I have my own responsibility, Amen. my yes, own yes. assignment. Yes. Yes. And if I fail, God is going to hold me guilty. Yes. Therefore, the Lord has spoke to me. Yes, yes. I was moving, as you may observe, our pillars. The first pillar in our church says, Seeking God. The second pillar says scripture, which is the word. So we believe prayer is essential for the life of the church. Amen. The word of God is essential. In order for prayer to be effective, we need faith. Come on, talk to me somebody. In order for prayer to be effective, we need faith. For without faith, it's impossible. For he that comes to God must first believe. So we need faith. And faith comes by hearing the word. Follow me, please. And in the word, of course, from moving from the word of God, we have worship or singing praises. Yes, yes. And we completed praises and we went all the way to sowing. Yes. We skipped serving yes. intentionally. While we were dealing with soil, the Lord spoke to us to go back to pray, Amen. to seek Him. Yeah. 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 Because as I've traveled around the world, hear me please, I've traveled worldwide. Yeah. All across Europe, Africa, the West Indies, all, almost all over the United States, teaching on spiritual warfare and prayer. Yes. And the only church I've been to that I saw the people of God mm. with a passion for seeking God yes, yes, is yes. when I was in Lagos, Nigeria. Mm. I went to a church. It was five o'clock in the morning. I went there. Me, Bishop Thompson, and another pastor. Mm. As we got there, I heard the loud noise coming from a distance. Mm -hmm. I remember saying to Archbishop Bessie Lawson, what is that noise I'm hearing? And he says, wait and see. Mm -hmm. As we opened the doors of that church, it's a huge center that seats about 15,000 people. Mm -hmm. The entire first floor was just packed with people, men and women, young and old. Mm -hmm. 
crying out to God with such a passion. And I says, oh my God, I wish we can have this in the United States. Mm -hmm. So, he said, Lord, we want that passion in America. Yes. We want that passion in America. Amen. And so we gave to our members these pressures. Yeah. yeah. Let me let you know something this morning. This is not just a piece of cloth. Amen. When you begin to pray with this covering over you, yeah, yeah. God's honor that. Yes. And there is an unusual anointing yes. that accompanies you praying oh, the blood of these pressures. Yeah. 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 Chains have been broken yeah. using these pressures. Oh, Therefore, since that today, the title of my message is the elementary teachings of a prayer. Are you being covered? Or who are you covering you? Are you being covered? Or who are you covering? Who are you covering? Are you being covered? Is anybody praying for you? Are you just depending on the little prayer that we do over our meal? Father, would you bless this food? In Jesus' name, amen. Uh-uh. That ain't cutting it. No. I want to show you how important prayer is. I have with me an iPhone that my daughter, Debbie, forced me to have. Uh-uh. I'm saying forced because she knows exactly when I went to the store what I want to get. I went to get me a flip phone because my flip phone died. So I went looking for one. And when I call my daughter, she says, Daddy, put me onto the clock, please. So I put on, she take my dad to where the iPhones are. So I got there, and the seller said to me, this is the new phone. I'm looking at it, I'm saying, what is that? <laughs> my daughter forced me to get this phone. Anyhow, so here I am, I have this phone. And from time to time, as I use this phone, I will notice that the the percentage of the battery will be depleted. Mm. And after a while, I would observe a red sign. Uh -oh. <laughs> Telling me that unless I recharge my phone pretty soon, I will not be able to use it. Uh. Mm. I'm saying this to you this morning. Because I realized, Pastor Wayne, that so many of us as believers are running on red. Yes. Right. You're running on red. We think we got a lot of time. So therefore, we are. In the meantime, after a while, you hear click. Dead phone. Not only are some believers running on red, but there are some churches. That are running on red. They believe that they got all this percentage of truth. Ah. Some of them are trying to plug their phone in the wrong outlets, right, 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 right. Yeah. the wrong places. Yeah. Those places cannot recharge their phones. Oh. I know. <laughs> because my wife has one of those things that says iPhone or what you call it, different things. If I plug my iPhone in a different source, it will just stay there all day. Still on ground. Put it in the wrong place. It must be connected to the right place. Amen. So I want to teach today on the benefits of having an effective prayer life. The benefits of having an effective prayer life. You may ask, Pastor, what's that word effective? Where did it come from? But it came from James. Write it down, please. James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16, B. The last part of that verse says, The prayer, and many of us are King James students. Right. So therefore, we say together, The prayer of the righteous man availed much. Come on, come on, you're a King James student. I got saved in King James school also. Come on. The prayer of the righteous man are very much. But today, I'm taking you to another school. Uh -huh. 
It's the NIV school. The NIV reads a little different. It goes like this. The prayer of the righteous man, they are powerful and effective. Come and say to me, the prayer of the righteous man, they are powerful and effective. One of the worst things that could happen to you is that you're praying with somebody who all they got is good words. Can't pray a fly off of you. I remember there were days when we were praying on the radio in the city of Boston. And I had some folks who good, I call them good prayer people. They can pray nice words, Sister Denisha. They got there, oh man, they know all the nice words in the Bible, all the scriptures, and they get one, not even a quarter inch of faith. It's what I call faithless prayer. Faithless prayer. They're talking, but there is not the unit. And when you're praying with somebody, and you're praying in agreement, you want someone who can touch heaven. If you can't touch heaven, don't pray with me. Because I don't got time to waste words. Amen. And I'll show you why in a few moments. Because the enemy that Roland Cooper fights, he is in this for the kill. In this for the kill. This, for the kill. this Friday evening, at my home, we'll be coming together for our night of prayer. We'll be gathered together from 10 to 5 in the morning. I know some of you say, that's a good one. This is not the first Friday, I know. <laughs> but we're going to do it. Amen. So those of you who want to join us, you're free to come to my house at 10 p.m. Leave your blanket at home. Don't go up with it. Because we have no room for sleepers. Oh, come. Pray with us this Friday. <laughs> Number one, the benefits of an effective prayer warrior. Number one, having an effective prayer life brings us closer to God. Amen. It brings us closer to God. Listen what John chapter 15 verse 7 says. If you abide, King James Version, the NIV says, if you remain in me, the NIV says, if you remain, but the King James Version says, if you, come on, say to me, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask me whatever you will. To be given to you. Let me see. Now, wait. <coughs> Let's, uh, I'll take this. Thank you. Thank you. You see, that word abide or remain doesn't mean someone who visit there sporadically. Right. Only when you have a need that you pray. Only when you feel like praying that's when you pray. Mm. Oh no, when your body says, let's do the prayer, uh -uh. that is somebody who knows the power of prayer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone who says, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. Amen. My words, the words of God begin to trouble you. I can't stay where I'm at. I got to draw close to God. You know, as, um, this, this past week had been rough for me because of the funeral of Sister Ida Joyce's son. Some of you perhaps may know who she is. Sister in the body of Christ, whose son was killed in an automobile accident. In store. The four young men that was killed, you both heard the news. And uh, as I look at the service, it just opened up a can of worms inside of me. Broke me down again. Jesus. What happened to me just last year? Yeah. Yeah. The pain. Mm. I said, Oh God, how is Sister Joyce mm. dealing with this? Mm. I wonder. If she did not know God, yeah, 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 yeah. if she did not have a relationship with God, yeah. how would she survive? Mm. 
when she got the news that night yeah. and her son, her baby boy, mm -hmm. great potential on his way to college, yeah. 17 years, the light just stopped, just shut up, just suddenly. Yeah. God, oh God, nobody could tell her, I understand what you're going through. Nobody, yeah. nobody knows the pain that it is when you lost a child so suddenly. Yeah. I look at Pastor Vanessa this morning with her baby in her hand. Precious baby. Yeah. To see that baby grow up. No live but for life. I'm telling you, when life throws you a curveball that you least expect it. Yes, 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 yes. You see, my brother and sister, our pastor this morning, I wish I could tell you that tomorrow you're going to face this or face that. I can't tell you what you're going to face tomorrow. All I know is that as you live, one day, yeah. life is going to throw you something. Yeah. Yeah. And you better know God, because when it comes, brothers and sisters, if you don't know God, you may just fall apart. Having an effective prayer life helps us to draw closer to the Father. Yeah. Number two, <laughs> having an effective prayer life allows us to live a spirit-led life. Allows the Spirit of God to have free course mm. as we walk down the code of life. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, I trust that you're writing these scriptures down. I know them because they are what help me. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3 says, Commit unto the Lord whatever you do in order for your plans to succeed. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and not to lean upon your own understanding. Yes, yes, yes. All our ways. You know, but that sister some of us. I remember when I was younger. I used to think a man, I'm young, the troubles of those old folks would never hit me, man. I am super cool. Man. <laughs> got my strength, got my energy, man. I did not realize that one day. One day, I'll be preaching a message like this. Because I've been through some stuff. I could speak like this to you this morning. Having lived an effective prayer life. Number three. Having an effective prayer life enables us to have power to fulfill our assignment. Enables us to fulfill our assignment. Let me say this to you. There is no accident among the people of God. None. As a matter of fact, everything in this world belongs to God. Yeah. Even if those of you that are viewing me online may think, man, ah, there is no God. But I was in the courts with my wife not too long ago. And as a judge was calling folks up, and she called a young man and she said, Do you swear by Almighty God to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing else? And the young man looked at the judge and said to the judge, Who God are you talking about? <laughs> and I remember sitting there in the courts and I said to myself these words, If the God whose breath is in your nostrils, fool, <laughs> decide that he's going to just take his bread from you. Let me see who God is going to call upon. You, you see, because some of us believe that this whole thing about God and church is just a big fake thing. It's not, not, not the meal of a church. Church is just another institution. Uh -uh. It's the only institution on God's earth that prepares men to meet him. The church of Jesus Christ. It's the only institution. Unfortunately, some of us as pastors, has led God's people astray. We got to give them account for that. Must. But we have a responsibility to let you know that every person is important to God. Amen. Let me just help those online. 
Every person who claims to belong to the LBGT, you belong to God. Every wino, every alcoholic, every person, every rich, every poor person, whether you are black or white, everybody belongs to God. I know you don't believe it, so let me say amen to Amen, <laughs> For John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the church. For God so loved only black people. We read that text, but we really don't believe it. We believe that God has favoritism. Ah, when Jesus came into this world, he died for the sins of the world. Everybody's important to God. Whether you came in this world with a mother and a father, you were raped, it doesn't matter how you came in here. As long as you have life, God has an assignment for you. Yeah. One of the saddest things that could happen to a person yeah. is that they live this life and never find their purpose. I was employed in a company in the city of Boston for many years. And when I turned in my resignation, I remember that a supervisor, the foreman, said to me, Cool. Why are you leaving? You leaving this company is one of the saddest things that could happen. And I remember saying to him, Did you realize the Lord is the one who gave me the words to speak to him? I said, Sir, the saddest thing that could happen to a human being is to know that they come into God's world because this world does not belong to you. Let me help you over here that thinks you own this world. This world does not belong to you. And as a matter of fact, the word independent should never be in the dictionary. Because none of us are independent. Everybody is dependent upon Almighty God. Can I have amen? amen. The air you breathe belongs to Him. The food you eat belongs to him. <laughs> the eyes you're looking out of, they all belong to him. If you decide to close one of those eyes off, you'll see how bad you are if you think you're independent. Everything belongs to him. God owns everything. Psalms 24 verse 1 says, the earth belongs to God and everything in this world belongs to him. So when Jesus came in this world, he came for everybody. So since that God has, has an assignment for everybody. It is just wise that you and I should check with him to find out why am I here? What is my purpose being here? You know, this past week, I had a funeral to do last Monday or Tuesday. And one of our ministers here accompanied me in this funeral. And after the service, they said, well, Pastor Cooper, a part of this service will be held at another location. I said, no problem. I go. They told me that the place where the service will be held is called Slaves. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know where Slaves are. I don't know anything about Slaves. You know? I've never been to Slaves. I said, okay, no problem. So, of course, after the service was finished, I, me and the other pastor, we drove over the slaves. And you know, I, and I, I'm a clergy color on, and, and I'm dressed, because I just finished a, a service, and uh, we opened the door, and when I opened the door, and those who were sitting around the back, <laughs> with a glass in their hand, look. <laughs> and there was I, walking in. We know for sure this morning, Pastor Cooper was not ashamed. Amen. I am not ashamed of who I am. Amen. I know who I am. Amen. I'm not trying to be nobody else. Amen. I walk into slaves. I got it. All eyes on me. I went in. I took my seat. All eyes on me. People came in and they were talking and drinking at the bar. He was some of a part of the service at the bar, having a good time. <laughs> Certain time. I called on the minister, I was in me. I said, open in prayer. Grab a microphone. So much noise in there. Grab a microphone. Grab a microphone. Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> They're praying inside the slaves. Those of you who do not know what is slaves, don't worry about it. Amen. <laughs> and she prayed. And she finished praying. I said, okay, let's sing a song. 
He said, well, I don't like these people here, nor does any of the gospel songs, so let's sing Amazing Grace. Right. So we sang Amazing Grace. And everybody, Amazing And folks over here singing, and those at the back, <laughs> but of course, so they began to sing too. And before they met the musician, because there was a band in there playing. Yeah. And the band, when the band heard people singing Amazing Grace, they stopped when they were singing and began to play Amazing Grace. They said, yeah, go. <laughs> there you go. Taking control. Yeah. I preached a message there. And the message I preached in that bar. Yes, oh, it's a bar. It's a club. By the way, this. I know in the flood they had lights this so like <laughs> But I I said my question that I asked them is what on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? I said everybody. And of course those at the back sitting there looking at me. This got to be a crazy man. Come in to slaves and having a sex and preaching with his Bible. And my Bible open. <laughs> yes. I'm not back up. It's right in the midst. Here is my question to you. What would Jesus do? Yeah. Think. Jesus would go right into the clubhouse. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, I'm not going to the clubhouse. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, where would the sinners be? Amen. <laughs> when I'm finished preaching, I said, every head bow, never had clothes. Some at the bar refused, didn't matter me. And please repeat this prayer after me. I led everybody to the Lord. Amen. Repeat, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending your, thank you for sending your son Jesus. <laughs> and they prayed along with me, Sister Darcy, they prayed the prayer of repentance. I said to them, if you don't have a church to go to, here's my card. And I have some of these blue cards. So I'm not sure if I got any yet. Oh, yes, there's one. These cards. Everybody that's inside of our church should have a bunch of these cards. When you go out and somebody asks you about your faith, give them one of these cards. Yeah. I said, don't, don't tell them, call Pastor Cooper. No. You are a member of the body of Christ. You should have a car. You ought to know the word because your assignment is kingdom first. Whatever you do, that's not your first assignment. Your first assignment is kingdom. Come on, say it means what? Kingdom. Very sad for a person who comes into this world and live their life. At the end of their life, they never knew why they came into this world. Some questions that must be asked is, who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? You need to ask yourself those questions before you can find your sign. Amen? Amen. Number three. Number three. Four, four. Number four. Amen. Thank you, guys. That's good, brother. Yeah. Having an effective prayer life allows you the ability to re receive spiritual insight. Mm. For there are things that God revealed to those of us that are part of his family who are always in communion with him that the average folks who go to church won't know. And there are some things that a pastor may be preaching and somebody says, oh God, Jesus, God, I thank you for that word. And the Spirit of God ministered to that person. But the other person just said, listen, what are you so emotional about? Because that goes over their heads. They have no clue what spiritual things are. There are folks who go to church but have no clue what the Bible talks about. The only time they read this book is when they come to church. Mm. I trust that's none, none of you here. You get into this book. And some of you perhaps have never been to one of my Bible studies. But this Wednesday, the Bible study is coming back to Boston. Amen. 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 It's coming to Boston to be held at the ABC building in Marathon. Prayer will be from 6 to 7 
And at 7 p.m., we may have a song or two, but by 10 past 7, we dig into this book. Yes. And I know today we live in a world where everything is social media and all these electronic devices. But I want to encourage you to take the book off the shelf. Bloody, that's not me. I walk with the book. Get your iPhone in your pocket. But walk with your book. Amen. And get something to write with because there's some revelation that God gives to me while I'm teaching the scriptures. And I know that this is also true. That the old Sunday school song that I learned as a boy. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you. I hope some of you know that song. Those of you who know it, can be singing, please. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you. Pray every day. And, and you grow it. And you what? Some of you know it well. Let me help you out with it. Those of you who don't know it. Pastor Lisa knows it very well. <laughs> you read your Bible and you pray every day and you grow. Go, go. There's also another part to that song. You don't read your Bible and you don't pray and you shrink. 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 I don't know who made it up, but I'm sure it's a good song. <laughs> there are some of us who believe that what we learned yesterday is good for today. But there are revelation knowledge that God has for his children. Listen to me, please. Niger, my son, we back there, when he was at Villanova College, one year he came home for one semester. And uh, the morning before he took the train to go back, I laid my hands on him. And we were praying as I normally would do. That God would protect him, that God would bless him there, that God would give him favor while he's at school. And while I'm praying for him, the Lord revealed to me that my son is going to travel very far. Let me just say this to those of you that have babies. Remember, the scripture says to train up a child in the way the child should go. The problem is, it, is that we as parents have no clue of where the child should go. So therefore, we do not know how to train the child in that vein. As I'm asking the Lord for his covenant of my son, he says, this one is going to travel very far. And I thought, Lord, you meant my daughter, Debbie. Because this one where he speaks Mandarin. She speaks Chinese. So look, the Lord, this one has been to school. She learned how to speak Chinese language. Lord, you mean ha. And the Lord said, ah, uh ah, -uh, he is going to travel very far. I took that information, told my wife, and I stuck it back there. Went to school, graduate, got a job here working in Boston. One day, he called me on the phone. Daddy, I'm going to South Korea. I'm saying, boy, can you speak Korean language? I mean, I mean you're going where? Does he have any black people in soccer? I mean, I'm just. <laughs> Daddy, I'm out of here. Five years later, I came back to Pastor. This guy. Because had it been for me, I would not have known what God's plans were for him. That's true. God gave me these children, yes, yes. but they all belong to him. Yes. Yes. As arrows are in the hands of a warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore, my job is to sharpen those arrows. Yeah, yeah. Those arrows, so when they are shot from me, they yeah, hit yeah. the mark every time. Yeah, yeah. Those of us that got children that aren't married, we need to pray that God show them their companions. Yeah. Can I have amen? Yeah. Yeah. Got some people that look like human beings, but they're not. Yeah. They're wow. aliens. What? Wow. <laughs> I know what I said. <laughs> you look like men, but they ain't. Amen. Look like women, but they ain't. Amen. Yeah, another being from another <laughs> space. Yeah. Pray that God keep them eyes up this evening. Yeah. Revelation knowledge. Having an effective prayer life gives us what? Revelation knowledge. Divine insight. 
Number one on the list. It says, number five, having an effective prayer life allows us to have authority over the devil. Scripture says in James chapter 4, to draw near to God and he will draw near to us. In order for us to resist the devil, we've got to draw near to God. And let me say this to those of you who believe that you can bind Satan and send him back to hell. Let me just let you know this morning, it is not possible. You can pray like Elijah, you can pray like who, but know for sure, you have no authority to bind Satan and cast him back to hell. Let me help you this morning. If that was possible, Jesus would have done so. But he did not do it. The devil, you and I have no power to bind Satan and cast him back to hell. However, <laughs> the word of God says, Jesus gave us authority over the works. Come on, send me over the, the works of the devil. The works of the devil. Very important. John chapter 10 verse 10, the scripture says that I have come that you might have a life and have it to the full. Or King James Version says, abundant life. But then he also says, the thief has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. And therefore, according to 1 John chapter 3 verse 8b, where the Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy. Come and say to me that he might destroy the works of the devil. Destroy the works of the devil. So that means that God has given to the church the power over the works of the devil. Yeah. So we have, a, a, we have authority to bind up the works of Satan. Yeah. When they then null and void, powerless. We have the power to do that. I, you, some of you perhaps have heard this from me before. My mother-in-law, who is, uh, who was my wife's mother, she's gone to be the Lord now. Um, when she came to Boston some years ago, she, she, of course, she walked with her pack. She used to smoke this pack, you know, put in tobacco in the thing and bang, 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 bang. Ah. <laughs> I mean, just like that. <laughs> She, she smoked this pipe all her years. Even before my wife was born, she'd been smoking this pipe. When she came to Boston, she walked in her pipe and the tobacco. Unfortunately, when she came to my house, nobody smoked in my house. If I don't smoke, you can't smoke either. And I don't smoke. So, of course, it was a little cool. So, my mother in law decided. She wants to smoke her pipe inside of one of the bedrooms. She felt and she closed the door. But smoke has a way of finding its way under the door. <laughs> My wife told her, you know, Mama, you know, Roland doesn't want anybody to smoke in her. I mean, my wife threw me under the bus. I mean, she didn't say, she said, we do not want. I mean, she says, she just put me out there like this. You know? <laughs> so of course I came in the evening and my mother-in-law seated in the room and she was upset just upset because my wife could not allow her to smoke this pipe in the house I said mama what's wrong son it is my daughter she is very rude that's what she said to me I said what, what has she done she told me that I can't smoke in her house, and she grew up in my house, where I smoke all her life. She doesn't want me to smoke in her house. I tap on her shoulder, I said, Mama, don't worry about it, it'll be okay. Next morning, I had a conversation with my father. Amen. He said, Lord, I love my mother-in-law, and I love my wife, but I can't afford to have and they smoke in my house. So I have a real problem. Yeah. Lord, I pray that the next time she take that pipe, try to smoke it, it will make her so sick. And I know you may look at me and say, 
That's good, but that's a selfish prayer. I know when I get to heaven, too. Uh, it makes us so sick that she'll kill us when she wanted to die. Well, of course, that day, what she did, I'm not talking about weeks after, I'm talking about that very same week. She took that pipe, tried to smoke it. And then I came in, she's upset in the same room. Mama, what's wrong? Son, somebody sold me some bad tobacco. <laughs> she tried to smoke it, couldn't smoke it. She said, but don't worry, because I'm going to send tomorrow to get me some fresh tobacco. I don't know what the difference between fresh tobacco and stale tobacco. I don't know if there is such thing as old tobacco. I don't know. All I know, tobacco smells yeah. Some say bad, some say stink. I don't know. All two is bad to me. Stink and bad. She sent to get her tobacco. When she tried to smoke that thing, she almost died. She threw that tobacco, she threw her pipe up, and she never touched us again. Continue. Yeah. Have you been prayer life? Give you authority over the works. Having an effective prayer life allows us to know God's will for our lives. And I think I covered that so much earlier. Having an effective prayer life allows us to bring the lost to repentance. And I want you to put the scripture up on the board, please, from Acts chapter 17, Acts chapter 26, verse 17. And this is how I want you to pray for your unsaved loved ones. Hmm. Observe the scripture. Let's read it together. God is speaking to Saul, whose name was changed to Paul. Yeah. The name Saul was his Hebrew name. Hmm. The name Paul is his Gentile name. So the Lord had changed his name from Saul to Paul because Paul was the apostle to that Gentiles. Peter was the apostle to the Jews. Helping you guys. So when you hear the names, Paul and Peter, what you know, the both of them had different assignments. Peter was called to be the apostle to the Jews. Paul was called to be the apostle to the Gentiles, of all of us who are the Jews. So the scripture says, come on together, I will rescue you. Now, who is talking? I. Who is the I? God is saying to Paul, I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. Stop there for a moment, please. You all need to pay attention. God is saying, I'm taking you out and delivering you from among your own people. Now, now, now how many of you, when you got saved, your enemies became your own household. Your brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? They'll attack me. I mean, I, you, listen, they told me I'm only in the church for my wife. I'm so glad I found my dad. Amen. Praise God. If you want to find one of us, Lord, help me. <laughs> Those of you who got wives outside the church, God help us. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I know they told me, yeah, you are in the church for six months. You can find your wife and come out. But I found my wife in there. I'm still inside. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Paul says, do not be unequally yoked yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be unequally yoked together. It's a different message. Uh, he says, I'm taking you out from among your own people. And from your culture, I'm removing you from there. And then the last part of the verse says, I'm sending you to them. So what God has done, he took us out from our family, brought us into his kingdom, washed that mess out of us, put his spirit inside of us, and then took us and put us right back among them. And you will say, but Coop, why would he do that? He know I have a problem with alcohol. Man, I can't go to sleep. He knows that that thing, man. Man, that alcohol is a way of pulling. <laughs> God says, I'm taking you, I'm putting you right back in the mix. You see, for some of us, we believe from the time we came to Christ, the Lord just says, Lord, would you take me home, please? 
If the Lord wants to take you home when you get saved, He's going to kill you right there. Yeah. Just kill you. Leave me up, Scotty. Whoop. Oh. Amen. But the Lord decided to leave you here because He has a work. Are you yeah. Can I have an amen? Yeah. Listen to me, please. The church of Jesus Christ is not a place where people come to sit down to have fun. And when we come to church, it's not a place where people there are entertaining you. That's for slaves. But in the church, God expects everybody to use their gifts to advance his kingdom. Come on. Everybody, every single person can do something. Amen. Sorry for those of you who don't believe it. There's some who says that only 20% of the church is supposed to work. But here is my question to you. If only 20% of your body was active, you pretty much went for the cemetery. Uh, and, if, and if that's how some churches are functioning, those churches are dead churches. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to say any church that only operates with 20% is pretty much a dead church. Yeah. 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 And if you are inside of a dead church, either you pray that the church will revive or get up from that church because you'll be buried with them too. I'm not ashamed to say. Amen. That's true. Got to be alive, living. Got to do what God calls. I need to finish this part because I got some more to share with you next week. So, so back to it. I was and then verse 18. Verse 18. Look at my God save him or save you. He says, God wants you and I to what? To open their eyes. The reason why is because the God of this world, small g, the God of this world has blinded their minds that they can be. And to turn them from that is to life and from the power of Satan to God. I want to stop there and I'm going to shut down right here because they always did. But I want to say this to you why this prayer is so important. Just last Wednesday, after we concluded our Bible study in Randolph, I received a message from someone, and Brother Trevor told me about it earlier. He says, Pastor, do you know that in Salem, that they are erecting currently a temple that's called the Temple of Satan, and that there is an idol that they are erecting there in Salem? I thought, you've got to be careful. He says, go online and take a look at it. And Wednesday night, Pastor Wayne sent me a picture. I want to put the picture up on the wall so that you can see what the witches and bollocks are erecting currently while we are here in Boston. Look what's taking place in Salem. Does this look like God? Come and talk to me. This is no fun. Why people can go to Salem and say, I'm going to see witches and wallop. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. This is real. Yeah. And this, what they're doing there, is against the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And while we are sleeping, yeah. row, row, row your boat gentle down the stream. The witches are busy. Craving havoc, not only against us, but against our children and our children's children. We have an assignment, brothers and sisters. Yes, and the only way we're going to defeat the spirit of that Antichrist is as we spend time covering ourselves, yeah. seeking the place yeah. of God. Yeah. Calling upon Jehovah. Yeah. Come on, the devil is alive. Yes. Wake up, church. Yes. Wake up, please. Mm. This is not time to play. This is real. Yeah. This is what's taking place in Salem right next door. Yeah. The enemy is erecting a temple Jesus. that Salem would, know that would be known as the capital of witchcraft yeah. in the whole United yeah. States of America. Yeah. In the meantime, we are just sitting back, enjoying the ride. The church is going to see, well, they think of a witchcraft, uh, and they have movies. Uh -huh. Movies. It was a part of those who taught them the struggle of witchcraft in Salem. And the witches bought a church in Salem. They bought a congregational church. And when they bought the church, 
They put a sign on the church saying, not a church, get over it. They painted the church in black, inside and outside. I went there myself to see that church. Because they took it from a church that was running a red. Wow. Took it from a church that was just there playing church, maintaining. Let's just come together on Sunday morning. Ah, by the be Lord, just in white, white gloves, white shoes. White, <laughs> but, I mean, like, oh no, no, you can't two three me here. Oh, no, uh, don't take that off your side. They are more concerned about uh, about stuff that was on the building than about the kingdom of God. Concern, we miss the mark. But the battle that I'm talking about is not one of flesh and blood. This, what you just saw on the screen, is real. That idol has no power beside what mankind gives to it. We give that idol power. Yes. Yeah. Believe you me, the power is effective. And we do severe damage in this region. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you, Jesus.